This is a good warm-up exercise. Okay, come on, Ricky. Ooh. One, two, three, four. Ooh. What did you eat this morning, Ricky? Uh, I just had coffee and uh, grilled cheese sandwich. Good. And this morning, uh, oatmeal, a cup of chicken breasts. Actually, two chicken breasts, oatmeal, was fine. Let's give you an honest answer. I don't think <clears throat> that the judging panel changed any kind from last year to this year. The only reason why Flex uh, Wheeler won uh, the spring contest, why he beat me, why I lost against him, was uh, because of a simple reason. He was uh, in several areas just uh, sharper than I was with one word. He was uh, harder, but I don't think uh, if I would have been in top shape, like uh, uh, for example last year at the Olympia, that he would have beat me. But on the other side, he deserved to win because he was just sharper. And then uh, I've heard a lot of people have been saying the symmetrical bodies are winning shows now and then placing ahead of the non-symmetrical, more massive guys. But I like to repeat uh, once again that this year not too many so-called uh, massive guys competed. Milos won the contest, Kamir won the contest and uh, Flex won the contest, but the only reason why they won is not only because they've been in top shape, but the other reason is also because they haven't been big guys there like me, Dillard, then uh, for example also Dorian, and that's the reason. Uh, to make it short, uh, I don't think the judging panel uh, was changing or changed. I think uh, that the guys in the best physical condition won the shows, and that's all right with me. So uh, uh, next time I step in on stage, I don't think it matters if I'm 260, 270, 280, as long as I'm in top condition. That's actually the basic statement which I like to do. For example, uh, if shorter guys like Sean or uh, Lee Priest are not in top condition, I think the same happens to them and you can't say that, that uh, the bigger guys won because they're bigger. So I think a uh, case of conditioning and to be at the right uh, time ready. Uh, I think that uh, Darren, has, uh, Darren Yates is uh, five times Mr. Olympia is already uh, a kind of uh, plus by entering the contest because, like I said, he won already the Olympia five times and when you go as a Mr. Olympia in a show, you're already 15 or I would say almost 20% ahead of the others. So it's a pretty good advantage for him. If I would be Mr. Olympia, I would probably have the same advantage. So I can't... Uh, criticize him because of this. Uh, what I think in general is that he has won politically the contest already this year, but not physically. And I am also convinced if he doesn't show up in best condition ever, he won't be the winner this year because uh, the crowd is coming closer and closer to him. And some guys uh, are even bigger than he is. Some guys have even the same sharpness that he has. So he's not uh, the ultimate uh, guy who was uh, actually a uh, kind of couple of years cold so uh, he's uh, beatable he's not invincible he's just a human being like I am and the others are so uh, I think uh, if he's not ready he can be defeated this year and um, uh, to come back uh, to, to that case that the contest is in the near of here of my uh, hometown San Diego I don't think that this is any kind of big advantage I would travel to Siberia or to Russia uh, somewhere else if I would have uh, better chances uh, to win the contest. I think it doesn't matter so much where you're competing because uh, the guys are mostly the same who are competing. depends only on conditioning. So with one word, I don't think that I have a big advantage because I'm competing here. Sometimes, uh, some days you feel that you're really on and some days you feel that you're not really on. So. Uh, I can't make any kind of prediction how I'll be looking at the day of the show or when they are or the one day after because uh, the physique is uh, uh, not a machine and so you can't uh, predict 100% what will be happening. But I'm uh, pretty confident that I will be uh, in shape. I don't know what my exact weight will be or how uh, ripped or not ripped, how I'll be up here on stage. But uh, 
I think uh, I'm right on uh, target and we'll see what uh, will be happening at this year's uh, Olympia in Long Beach. I'm now the fifth uh, time in row qualified for the Olympia, but uh, entering the fourth time, uh, the Olympia 93, I didn't enter it. So uh, we have this year 97. And uh, like I was saying before, and I was also stating in several articles, most of the time I don't train for training partner, but uh, when I have the opportunity to train with uh, one of the pros, like for example if it's uh, Jean-Pierre Fuchs or Lee Priest or Ian Harrison or any one of the top athletes whom I really like to train, then I uh, take the chance, or uh, in that case um, I was training the last couple of weeks and months with uh, my friend and training partner Ricky Penn who is sitting here and eating actually the pancakes. He's really enjoying himself, <laughs> but I think he deserves it because uh, he's uh, ready and available for me all the time in the morning, in the evenings, on the weekends, and he's very supportive and helpful. I think when you have somebody like that, then you, know, you should uh, take uh, advantage of it. It's not only that that uh, he helps me out, but I help him also in the other way. So we are actually in the moment a pretty good team. And uh, like I said, uh, if you have one who actually fits to your schedule, then you should uh, uh, stay with uh, the same person. If not, uh, you should uh, go by yourself and uh, train alone. Let's go meet her breakfast. <laughs> this is my breakfast, you know? <laughs> Glass of water, it's his breakfast, his breakfast. breakfast. <laughs> we can have breakfast uh, maybe in 10 days, hopefully. Thank you. <laughs> 